We are making this episode in the moment of great sadness and profound sorrow. On January 18th of 2023, a helicopter crashed into a kindergarten near Kyiv. It fell into the kindergarten and then crashed into a residential building. A minister and his deputy minister died in the accident, as well as a total of 14 people of the helicopter's crew. Right before that, five days ago, a Russian missile completely destroyed a part of the residential house at Dnipro. In those tragic days, many Ukrainians died and a great many more were injured. Of course, not to mention kids who became orphans for their entire lives. It is sad, but these tragedies only ensure that we cannot betray the memory of those killed by Russia's full-scale war. And today we will show you examples of how Ukrainians are finding the way to handle all this. And even find time for some optimism too. Hello and welcome, this is the Solutions from Ukraine podcast which is brought to you by the Rubrica Media Outlet. My name is Vladislav Faraponov, I am the co-host of this podcast and also an analyst at Indian News Ukraine and Ukrainian Media NGO. And I'm joined by my colleague Anastasia Rodenko, who is editor-in-chief of the independent all-Ukrainian Rubrica Media Outlet. And before we start, let me remind you that you can support us at Patreon. Hello, Nasty. Hello, Vlad. Indeed, uh, this is a tragic day for us, for Ukraine. Rubrica went to report about both mentioned tragedies. Those are the days that will remain in our memory for our entire life. Yes, so uh, now we will start from today's morning as we are making this episode just a couple of hours after that. And it is not easy, I would say, to to speak uh, um, after such a disaster. So the helicopter was flying with the with the Minister of Internal Affairs, his deputy minister and their staff. Around 8.20 in the morning, there was an accident and all of them died. We don't know, of course, the real causes of this particular accident yet, but it is important to explain this. Why should Russia be blamed for it, regardless of what the investigation will show? It is already known that the helicopter was flying to one of the hotspots in the Kharkiv region, where Ukraine's armed forces conducted an enormous counteroffensive in the east in September in, and, and before that in August. The helicopter, of course, it wouldn't be flying so low if Russia didn't launch a full-scale war. And again, Regardless of what the investigation will conclude, it is Russia that caused this horror. Yes, absolutely. And I think it is also an opportunity for the world to take a look back. It's almost a year. We would like not to pronounce it as we thought we would need to, but a year. None of us in Ukraine can feel safe until the last Russian soldier goes away from our land and until Russia is unable to launch missiles on civilians. We have just got away from the tragedy in Dnipro and there is another shock. But I would like to try to find uh, some light in this dark time. This light are Ukrainians. For example, those are two Ukrainian boys, 14-16 years old, Hlip and Andriy. They helped those injured and scared children today by just bringing sweets, of course, to those who didn't need medical care at the time. They called their friends and they were also helping the rescuers find a way to, to those injured. This is brave if we think about the fact that it was a helicopter crash. Indeed, and it is really so painful, as you understand, uh, basically, you can be at this place, or your loved ones. Uh, so, like, Rubrica's reporter actually went to Dnipro to see what happened uh, uh, there on uh, on the weekends, uh, to, see, uh, to see it actually firsthand, and, uh, uh, and the same applies to 
to Brovary. It is the outskirts of Kiev. It is like around five kilometers, for example, uh, like from the from the neighborhood where I used to live, and uh, it it is uh, mm, like it is really close to Kiev, and uh, usually many people live there, but they continue work in Kiev, so uh, they just uh, they just go to 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 the downtown of Kiev, uh, basically just for work, but they live and uh, normally their children they go to the kindergarten and there uh, the same and, and uh, the same applies to school so uh, it is actually th th the reason why this tragedy is so painful because the helicopter crashed into a kindergarten exactly at a time when uh, parents uh, basically brought children uh, and um, and were about to leave the the kindergarten let me describe more about Dnipro. For three days, uh, members of the state emergency service and volunteers too were doing their best to clear the debris of the ruined houses. We have seen the videos of those heroes working there and not knowing if the entire building will collapse or no. So, 39 people have been rescued uh, after this operation, including six children. And Rubrika's correspondent reported from one of the po points of invincibility where those who were injured uh, due to the Russian attack on the residential building are, uh, were placed. And uh, so generally points of invincibility, it is the name created by Ukraine's authorities, is uh, a place uh, arranged by Ukraine's local authorities in cooperation with the central ones uh, where uh, a person can can charge uh, a phone, uh, can have some uh, uh, some water, some uh, some hot water, some some snack and uh, some snacks and others. So in this particular case in Nipro, it was a place where people were uh, spending uh, this critical time and uh, they had an opportunity to see a doctor for example there so it really helped a lot uh, to cure uh, those injured uh, on the uh, after the attack on on the dnipro it is remarkable for me uh, how fast volunteers organized themselves the whole city helped the victims People from Dnipro were bringing th things, warm blankets, uh, food, on their own initiative until 3 o'clock in the morning. The director of the institution where the point was located described the, the whole process for us. She received new ca calls every second. People constantly needed help. Yes, and uh, it is really important uh, if we speak about the self-organization that actually volunteers realized that uh, if uh, if like a lot of people uh, keep uh, uh, keep coming and uh, and bringing uh, new stuff, uh, that uh, there would be a need to to sort this, and uh, uh, it is it, it it was basically one of the most important uh, tasks uh, for them um, at the very at the very first moments. So. Uh, she recalled that uh, around a thousand people from Dnipro brought a huge amount of things, and um, mm, uh, we'll post uh, the link of our stories from there. And uh, it is In the really description of, uh, yeah, this podcast. it is really remarkable how uh, how the local population um, organized uh, itself, uh, despite the fact that it was Saturday. So this horror really touched uh, um, all in in the Dnipro, and uh, also like a lot of people around Ukraine were were helping uh, those affected by this this tragedy. And this story uh, reveals how hard the rescuers worked 
uh, and rubrica correspondence so how even the heating point was organized by volunteers just next to the destroyed residential building the volunteers of one charity local foundation uh, there are no strangers children set up a support like mobile support point for everyone who works at this skin rescuers police magicians uh, volunteers here the rescuers could get hot food and drinks as well as to catch a breath and uh, Olesia one of the volunteers said us uh, that like we don't leave even for a minute and no it's not difficult for us because we see the eyes of people who are really struggling yes and and for example Alexander um, a Nipro resident uh, uh, he alongside his friends uh, they set up a, a generator and started providing people with tea snacks uh, uh, right near the house uh, which was destroyed uh, and uh, uh, he told us that uh, uh, they were shocked and really wanted to help uh, the city services and the victims so uh, basically what they did they just uh, uh, prepared tea coffee sandwiches sweets uh, they helped people uh, charge uh, their phones and uh, and and other important stuff but um, but more importantly in my view is that he basically set an example a behavior that uh, that many others might follow but of course due to the stress they they were perhaps not able to do it so quickly but um, uh, such examples uh, they are really important in in the so-called self-organization there are many stories like this for example a woman caught up in this building told the rescuers to destroy parts of her own balcony to be able to take her neighbors I would also add that um, that one of the most popular banks in Ukraine, uh, the only neo bank in, US, in Eastern Europe, which is called uh, Monobank, uh, it collected two million dollars uh, during a couple of days, uh, um, according to Ali Harakhovsky, the bank's uh, CEO, who is actually from Dnipro, and the bank uh, itself gave around five percent of this amount, and it is really a lot considering that. It is winter. It is the country which is in the full-scale war, and uh, the, um, of course, uh, such uh, charity was important. But uh, it was really impressive how how fast people collected this amount of money, and uh, and basically the same accounts for some other victims. Um, uh, specifically, people sp- spread the word uh, through the social media and. Uh, uh, started um, actually transferring money. Let me also add that Ukrainians demonstrated active self-organization while Russia attacked the most prominent university in Kiev and in Ukraine. On December the 31st, uh, Russia shelled Ukrainian cities with particular brutality. Kiev was on the list of priority targets for the occupiers. One of the enemy rockets fell on the territory of the Tarashchenko National University of Kiev sport complex and the blast wave mutilated all the surrounding buildings. Rubrica showed uh, photos of the place where rockets fell. And imagine workers, teachers and students gathered there on January the 1st, literally next morning, to clear the debris at their native faculties. By the way, the university opened an account and the funds go directly to the treasury. Together with the rector of university, Rubrica invites you to join the restoration of the of the institution. Official details can be found at the link rebuild.knu.ua. So, Vlad, what do those examples demonstrate more broadly? Well, in my view, it is another demonstration of how much Ukrainians really want to win. And that we are ready for everything to make this wish come true but i'm not speaking here about territorial concessions as a british uh, famous prime minister winston churchill said you cannot negotiate with a tiger if your head is in his mouth and all of that i mean we have been through as a nation as a community as a as a 
great society shows that Ukrainians are winning every day and we just need uh, more support to win faster and uh, of course with uh, with uh, f- with uh, fewer tragedies like in bravery and in Dnipro. not more we don't ask uh, so much but it really costs a lot for ukrainians uh, to win to uh, to withstand uh, this aggression uh, and uh, and despite that that we do not consider any other options as uh, as uh, the victory it is real it is really hard to uh, see uh, the the aftermath of uh, this uh, of this horror that is why we ask you to become our patron on patreon and bring our victory closer <laughs>